Gaming Belt presents 15 Best Adventure Games of This Generation. Adventure games have been an important part of the industry for as long as the industry has been around, right from the days of text adventures to developers like LucasArts making further strides with games like Monkey Island and Grim Fandango. There was a period of several years where it felt like the genre had not only stagnated, but died out. But starting with the twilight years of the previous generation, we've seen an explosion in the popularity of adventure games once again. Thanks to the efforts of developers like Telltale Games, Quantic Dream, Don't Not Entertainment, and many others, as well as the massive surge of the indie scene, adventure games are better and more varied than they've ever been. In this feature, we're going to take a look at what we feel have been the 15 best adventure games so far this generation. Given how many of these there are to choose from, missing out on a few great ones was unavoidable on our part, so if one or some of your favorites got left out, do let us know in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Detroit Become Human Adventure games are largely the domain of indie developers or studios with smaller budgets, but not exclusively so. David Cage and his team at Quantic Dream have been making masterful adventure titles for several years now, and with Detroit Become Human, they truly hit the ball out of the park. With a story that was meaningfully branching, choices and consequences that truly make the player stop and think, an excellent setting, and some of the best visuals we've ever seen in any video game, Detroit Become Human ranks among the best of the best of this genre. Detective Pikachu Who'd have thought that one day we'd all get to play as the world-class wisecracking detective talking Pikachu, and that it'd actually be good? Detective Pikachu on the 3DS had one of the most bizarre premises ever, but it makes it work so well. It has a story that is, surprisingly enough, interesting, which is brought to life by some pretty strong and witty writing as well, not to mention great voice performances from all the main characters involved. Now we just have to wait for the Ryan Reynolds Voice Pack DLC. Night in the Woods Night in the Woods is truly an exceptional game. Its cartoony art style and use of anthropomorphized characters suggests a light-hearted tone, which it puts to use to tell a genuinely moving story, which is then realized through incredibly strong writing and excellent character development. From a design and mechanical perspective, Night in the Woods is deeply rooted in simplicity, instead drawing its strengths from deliberate pacing and confident storytelling. Thimbleweed Park Thimbleweed Park is a throwback to the days when Monkey Island ruled the roost in the adventure genre, with similar point-and-click style mechanics and a visual style that is equally reminiscent of the LucasArts classic. And it exhibits many of the same strengths, showing that some things are truly timeless. The writing is engaging and humorous, and the tale it weaves is an interesting one, but its biggest strength lies in its puzzles, which are challenging and rewarding enough to make you stick with the game right until the end. Life is Strange With Life is Strange, Don't Not Entertainment took the style of gameplay and storytelling that Telltale Games popularized, but went above and beyond anything we'd ever seen. The story of Max and her heartwarming friendship with Chloe is captivating, which is helped by the excellent way both the main characters are developed throughout the course of the five episodes, while the time travel mechanics add an extra layer of intrigue to the proceedings as well. The setting of Arcadia Bay is also particularly memorable, and though many people might have issues with how the game chooses to end, the excellence of everything that precedes that ending is undeniable. Life is Strange Before the Storm there was some skepticism surrounding Life is Strange before the storm before it came out, owing to the fact that it wasn't being developed by Don't Not Entertainment, or that there was no time rewind mechanics involved, but Deck Nine managed to deliver an excellent prequel nonetheless. Chloe continued to be an amazing character, and learning more about her past before Max returned to Arcadia Bay turned out to make for a great story. Tales from the Borderlands Telltale Games R.I.P. can be credited for the resurgence of the adventure games genre with their incredible efforts with The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us licenses in the final years of the previous generation. And this generation, they decided to take things further and acquire even more licenses. And while some, like The Game of Thrones, didn't pan out very well, others did. One example of the latter is Tales from the Borderlands, a game set in 2K Games' wacky, hilarious universe that leveraged some of its biggest strengths, humor, style, witty writing, and a story that doesn't take itself too seriously, and is that much better for it. Firewatch 
It's easy to dismiss games like Firewatch as walking simulators, but one playthrough of the excellent Campo Santo title shows just how big of a mistake that would be. Firewatch is a highly unusual title, but it's one that you can't ever forget once you play through it. It has some of the best acting performances you'll ever see in a game, and a story that keeps you hooked from beginning to end, all of which is brought to life by a gorgeous, vibrant aesthetic that will never cease to amaze you with its visual delights. Oxenfree Oxenfree is a perfect illustration of just how much the genre of adventure titles has been brought forward thanks to the innovative and unusual efforts of indie developers. If you want to label it as something, it would technically be horror, but that isn't entirely accurate because really, Oxenfree is its own thing. It has some of the best written dialogue we've seen in a game in years, a beautiful visual aesthetic, some excellent sound design, and a plot that will keep you engaged for the entirety of its runtime. Batman The Enemy Within Batman was another huge license that Telltale managed to nab this generation, and while things were a bit rocky with the first season, not least because of a bevy of technical issues, with The Enemy Within they delivered not only one of their best games ever, but also an excellent Batman story that any fan of the property would appreciate. The portrayal of the Joker and his relationship with Batman didn't deviate too far from what we've seen in previous movies, comics, and other stories, but the strength of its execution helped it stand out nonetheless. Until Dawn Like Detroit Become Human, Until Dawn was a high-budget title in a genre that is dominated by games that are usually more conservative in this regard. And just like the Quantic Dream games, Supermassive's old-school horror game made excellent use of its budget. Featuring best-in-class visuals, an excellent soundtrack, and some incredible voice and acting performances, Until Dawn proved to be a captivating experience, one that leveraged the concept of player choice very, very well, and delivered some genuinely frightening scares along the way. What Remains of Edith Finch what Remains of Edith Finch is a game that knows perfectly well what its biggest strengths are, and it plays to them constantly. It doesn't care much about interactivity or actual playable mechanics, and instead chooses to focus on an emotionally engaging and genuinely moving story, which it tells brilliantly. Learning more about the Finch family is a sad and captivating experience, and one that will stay with you long after you're done with the game. Abzu Abzu is a strange, lonely, meditative game. Its mechanical simplicity can be mistaken as a sign for laziness, but once you get into the game, you realize that it is actually one of the game's strongest suits. Swimming through its waters is a joyous experience, and its large spans of nothing but beautiful sights to behold can be truly captivating. Sure, that can also prove to be a barrier of entry, while the occasionally awkward camera can also be problematic, but once Abzu grabs hold of you, it's hard to get it out of your head. Gone Home There's not a lot of games that have made a case for video games being an effective method for interactive storytelling as well as Gone Home has. Gone Home employs excellent storytelling methods, telling its tale in fragments, through audio cues and environmental storytelling, and a reliance on exploration, to tell an extremely engrossing tale. Like What Remains of Edith Finch, it is lacking in interactivity, but its strengths in other areas elevated above any perceived flaws. Tacoma. Developed by Fulbright, the developers of Gone Home, Tacoma doesn't quite hit as hard, but it's still a journey worth taking. In a pretty short runtime, it establishes an excellent setting and a strong cast of eight characters that it manages to develop very well across the board. Visual design and art style are also among the game's biggest strengths, which also deserve a lot of the credit for the game's memorable setting. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.